I wish you could. Ah. I think it was back in uh, June when we returned to having Minyanim after three months of not having a minion, three months of not uh, being able to say a Dorvish of of not being able to say a Yehishmei Rabba. So I sent out a Gemara as it's quoted in, as it's quoted in the tour. The Bishaw Shabbene Yisrael Miskansen, when Cloud Yisrael get together, the Onan Yehishme Rabba Mivorach, and we dive in together that a Kadish Baruch Hu's name should be fully recognized. For the time when a Kadish Baruch Hu's name will be recognized by all. So the Gemara tells us the beginning of Brachos, Minaneya Akadish Baruchu Roshe Vaimer Ashreya Melach Shemekalsin Oso Bevesa. Shemekalsin Oso. And that Kadish Baruchu says about himself how fortunate Kadish Baruchu is. That his people are praying for his, for his uh, full redemption, so to speak. Praying for his becoming known to all. And he continues to say, But how distressing it is that the Kaddish Baruch our father doesn't have us around his table and how much the children suffer by not being able to be around the table of their father. And then some time later, we came back to the shuls. Not everyone has come back to the shul, but we're all on the trajectory. And then we read the Gemara the way it appears in Shas, not the way it's quoted by the Torah. That even when HaKadosh Baruch Hu sees us that so we're not in our minyanim outside, not in the backyard minyanim, but we are in minyanim in, in our shuls, in our Bata Midrashim. That's when the Kaddish Baruch Hu was Menaneya and says, Ashrei HaMelech Shemekalsin Oso Veveso. So what is missing? As I, one title of the Drasha. What don't we have? If we have the Vorm Shebek Dusha, we can now daven with a minion and we can say every part of daven that requires a minion so what is still out of reach? 
And that's the principle of Berov Om Hadras Melech. That there's something beyond having a minion. There's something beyond having a, a 20 member, 30, 40, 50, whatever it is. Some coming into a shul where every space is designated. Having a minion that one has to be at a distance from each other. And we can't simply fill the seats shoulder to shoulder. So that we're missing the Rav Om Hadras Melech. Shlomo Melech says that the, the king is celebrated. The Rav Om, when there's a large group of people. But when the people aren't there, when there's a small group, so then there's the fear of, of going hungry. In other words, Shlomo Melech says, people bring bracha. So you might think that when there are fewer people there, so there's more food, there's more space. person might think it's not so bad to have, to be able to sit and to have uh, area all around us. So Shlomo Melech tells us it's not like that. People bring bracha. And when there are lots of people, there's more bracha. And if there are fewer people, that's when you have to be nervous that there may not be enough food. So if we're missing something, if we're missing Berov Om Hadras Melech, Chazal teach us that wherever we're missing something, we should learn those, we should learn about it. If a person doesn't have a Megillah on Purim, he should have to learn the Megillah. The Morris says that Kola Oseik the Torah Kilohikriv Ola Minchas Chatos Vashem. We don't have the Korbanos. A person learns the parshas of Korbanos, so the Rishbaruch accepts Ki Ilohikriv. So I thought we should study the parsha of the Rav Om Hadras Melech. It's very very relevant. Sometimes the first time that we meet the halacha of Rav Om Hadras Melech. I remember as a child, for the first time that the ruling was crystallized was a, a Matsoi Shabbos when two Jews had yard site and they both wanted them for the Amud. So they asked who, who wants to join one of the, uh, one of the people at say Kaddish in a separate room. And then there was a question, well, is that right? Maybe it's better we should all be together. Why should we diminish a minion? Why, is that really as chus? It is, as, is it as chus for the nifter to have his own kaddish, to have his own shliach tzibur, so to speak, but at the expense of the larger tzibur? And it's a discussion amongst the postkim. What is the a correct approach comes down probably different in Hagim and Western and Eastern European Jewry. Western European Jewry held that Birov Omad was of uh, greater value, and Eastern European often went for the, the separate uh, Minyanu. It happens to be that in this particular period of time, the sugya berov omad Melech is particularly addressed because there is a, an entry by the Mishnah Brura that the chazan who says slichos in the morning, he should daven the mincha, the shachras and the mincha. Some say he should daven the marv the next day, others say he should have daven the marv before, and the Mishnah leaves it almost as if there is no other opinion. And it's a hard, a hard halacha or minog to understand. We don't say in, a, in the middle of Shvat that the person who daven shach, who should daven mincha. 
So all of a sudden, by slichos, we say that the Jew who daven slichos have maschum and mitzvah oimim leigimor. You should finish the rest of the day. The common practice is not like that. The common practice is that if we have an omel in shul and the omel is comfortable saying slichos, all right, so we put, put him up for slichos and he'll carry on with shachvis. Mincha depends. Then other omel in shul. It's not the common practice. What happened to this entry of the Mishnah Bura? So the, the later post can point to a, a tshuva by the Binyan Shlom, the Binyan Shlom was the was the Rav in, uh, in Vilna. He also wrote the Cheshek Shlom, which is often published at the back of the of the Vilna Shasta property. And the Binyan Shlom says that the issue goes back to a Gemara. I sent out the Makara, it's very late, but uh, through an email, you have it. In an email on your phones, Agamaran Yuma Dam Chavav. Gemara says it was a machlekes. If when the when the Koyanim divided up who would do what in the Beis Hamikdash, so they had, as we know from the Mishnayis in Yuma, they had Pius and they had different lots. So the Gemara says the Mishnah says the machlekes whether there was a separate lot that was cast for bringing the pieces of the korban from the ramp, ramp to the Mizbeach. There was one lot was cast, who brings the piece of the korban up? Was there another, was the, the person who brought it up the ramp, did he bring it up the ramp and leave it by the Mizbeach, or did he just bring it up the ramp? That was the Machlaikas. The Mars says, what's the Machlaikas? What are they arguing about? Whether we have another person, another lot, whether we separate it out. So the Gemara says, because we have a principle, the Rav Am Hadras Melech. So if we can get more people involved in the Korban, so that we have more Jews doing this mitzvah. So we now should have another person bring the animal up to the Mizbeach. And the Tanom disagreed, and they said, it looks like it's a Tircha. It looks like it's too much to bring it all the way up. So therefore, it's better to have the same person bring it up. But this Mishnah, this idea, that having more people involved in doing a mitzvah, the Rambam Pirish Mishnah is the second source, like Niach to teach us, the more people that are involved. So the Binyan Shalom has said that if I have the same person davening slichos and shachros and minch, it goes against this principle. Better to have one person daven slichos and another person to daven, uh, to daven shachros, another person mincha. Mr. Burra held that apparently the rule of if you begin, finish up, that that somehow applies to slichos more than a regular davening. And that that principle overruled the principle of the Rav Am Hadras Melech. But the Binyan Shlomo says that we've adopted the principle, the one that's, that we understand better, give it out, give it out. In fact, the Mordechai Dendi Megillah says, then that is why we have two people doing Psicha. And we now know in Corona that one person can do Psicha, he can take a day for Torah, he can do Hagba, Galila, he can lay. Now we understand what the Mordechai is saying. The Mordechai is saying we specifically have one person open the Pereiches and one person open the door and then take out the Sefer to and then give it to the Chazan. And then the Chazan, and then he brings up, he, he puts it down and then we have a Gabba who takes the, the mental off and then we have one Gabba. We, we didn't understand what the Mordechai was saying, that this was a special on Hog of Cloud Yisrael. Now we understand what the Mordechai was saying. You can have one person do the whole thing. But since... The Gemara says that we would davke a point more koyanim. Unless it looks like it's a tircha. You can't, but here it doesn't look like a tircha. So we have different people taking out the, the Sefer Torah and undressing the Sefer Torah and putting it back in. The uh, Mishnah Lochis, the Ungver Rav, says that he thinks that that is why when it comes to a brismila, we have so many people involved in the brismila, you can have as many clattering as you want. 
You have one final kvat as the main person, but often the baby gets handed over and over and over again. And then you have a person who brings the baby in and then puts on the kishlio and then puts on the kin. It can induce many more people. So the Ungvar Rav said, maybe it comes from this Gemara. There's a Gemara in Psachim, a similar Gemara in Psachim, that says that when the Korban Pesach was shecht and was slaughtered and the blood was poured, so the blood would go from cup to cup to cup. Normally the, the blood is brought by one Koyen from the Korban all the way to the Mizbeach. Pesach, we had specifically every Koyen stays in his place and just moves the blood from one to the other. Why? <clears throat> Get more people involved in this, in this Korban. V'roi v'am adras melech. So, and that's the, the Chayonim who has a whole section of principles that apply to mitzvahs. He concludes, mitzvah sheyachol la'asois bechabura, yase bechabura v'loi b'yachin. If a The advice from Chazal is I think there's a problem with the shul feed. I'm trying to find out. Someone in shul has been informed, and from what I understand, they're trying to fix it. So everybody just stay comfortable, and hopefully it'll be back on in a couple of minutes.
Okay. Good. We're back. We're back. So the idea of Roy Vam Hadras Melech, that it's, we celebrate the king, Kodesh Baruch Hu, with a larger group of people, to us that's an intuitive idea. The more people that are there, so the, uh, the greater that uh, people buy into an idea, the more people that are there, the, uh, the greater the sense of, of, uh, of comfort that we're giving to the person. And I remember in my mind when I think about the idea of so I think back when I was first in Eretz Yisrael and at that time as sure as is the practice now as well. So Friday nights, the American boys used to visit the various tissue of the various rebellion. And I remember going down Meir uh, Shorim, I would hear the various tissue. And I remember towards the very, very end, I don't know if it still exists, because it goes like many, many years. Uh, there was, was the Rebbe Arla Hasidim. At the very, very end was the big uh, coil of Rebbe Arla. And then many, many Hasidim. At that time, that's where all of the Hasidim wore the yellow colored Bekishas gathered together. It wasn't as over all of your shalim as it is now. And before you got to Rebbe Arla, there was the, what they called, I think the, forget it, it was the son or the Adam, the Ben or the Adam. Rebarla was Nifter. And the uh, son-in-law apparently was appointed to be the next Rebbe. And he got the, the large crowd at the very, the large steeple. Several years afterward, Rebarla's son had a dream. In the dream, Rebarla came to him and said, uh, I don't know the exact, uh, the exact uh, dream, but anyways indicated a mistake was made and that the son should have taken over. That didn't uh, work out so well with the Hasidim. So on the way down to Ravarla was, was the Ben and the Adam, the son and the son-in-law. The son was an older Rav. He had a small table around him. Older, looked like very, very distinguished Hasidim. <clears throat> but uh, it was Shrach. And then you walk down two or three blocks and there was a place that was pulsating live, which had bleachers, had uh, scores and scores of chasidim. So the idea of b'roiv am hadras melech, malchus dik, needs bleachers and bleachers. That's, uh, we understand, b'roiv am hadras melech. There is a, another Gemara that is also was relevant to us just a few days ago on Rosh Hashanah. And there the Gemara says that why do we, why do we blow Shoifer during Yosef? We should blow Shoifer during Shachras. Why is Shoifer during Yosef? So the Gemara says, why should Shoifer be Yosef? Because even in the times of the Gemara, you got a bigger crowd from Yosef. More people came from Musaf. And uh, so why not? And apparently they were referring to more men came to Musaf because men were more mechuyiv in the mitzvah. So b'roiv am hadras melech. So the Gemara says, if you wait to do a mitzvah for the bigger crowd, so why don't every yom we should say halal during Musaf? Why are you saying halal during Shachris? Gemara says, Gemara says, because you have another principle, that those who are alert to doing the Rabbanu Shalom's will, come early. A person's Azor is, a person is one who is charged, a person is, uh, feels responsible for the Rabbanu Shalom, a person who feels that what I have to do is take care of HaKadosh Baruch when his mitzvahs, Magdi does it soon, it's the only thing on the plate. So the Gemara says we have a, a tension, we have a, a conflict. Do we go Magdimen early because reason Magdimen the mitzvah speaks, it shows alacrity and excitement and it trains a person to be excited? Or do we go with Berov Om Hadras Melech, more people, more COVID? The Gemara says that we should, Hallel proves that the more important principle is 
reason makdim in the The more important principle is to have the halal in shachris, and then you, you lose the large crowns. So what happened to Shafer? Shafer should also blow in the morning. So the Gemara says, as we often discuss, that Shafer was by Shachris. But once the Romans thought that we were calling people, it was a, a call to battle, so, and they would appoint various soldiers to, to make sure that we wouldn't blow Shafer, so he couldn't blow Shafer. And when the Romans were convinced that we we're busy davening and it's a religious rite, they said, okay, and they left. But that's why we couldn't blow Shafer. In fact, the Yerushalmi says, as we learned a few weeks ago, that in fact there was one time when they blew Shafer in the morning and the Romans thought that the Jews were, were rebelling and they wiped out the entire shul. So we always have the practice of blowing Shafer in the afternoon in Musaf. But in principle, if you have a conflict between Beroiv Am Hadras Melech and Zrizin Makdim and Lemitzvahs, Zrizin wins out and the proof is Halal. Halal is always during Shachris. Question that we want to look at is that there are numerous exceptions. We'll count three exceptions to this principle. Each one is, has its own, is interesting in and of itself. One is a Beir Allah also. Very, very relevant for this week. Kiddush Levana. Common practice to wait till Matzoi Yom Kippur for Kiddush Levana. People are besimcha Matzoi Yom Kippur, a large crowd in shul. So we can say the, the Kiddush Levana besimcha. Or do we try to hop the Kiddush Levana before Yom Kippur so we come into Yom Kippur with another schus? Machleik is minhagin. But the Be'er Allah says, putting aside Yom Kippur, on a regular month, we have a choice of making Kiddush Levana on a Tuesday or on Matzoi Shabbos. So one concern is Big Day Shabbos. It's more B'chavadik for the mitzvah. The Yabbos have a bigger crowd. B'roiv am hadras melech. What's the halacha? Halacha is, is the common practice. If Matzoi Shabbos is going to be after the 10th, so then chab, chab it early. But if Matzoi Shabbos is going to be before the 10th, you have a number of days, wait till Matzoi Shabbos. So that goes against the Gemara. The Gemara says, Halel, it's the reason, Makdim and Lemitzvahs. And Beroiv Am Hadras Melech takes second step. Comes to Kiddush Levana. So here the more common practice is to go against the model of Halel and to wait and see if we can get a bigger crowd, Matzoi Shabbos. There's another shuva that the Mishnevura quotes. Mishnevura quotes a very specific example. It was a town with many shuls, but the shuls all davened late. They davened the uh, shachris and they didn't make zman, van kriyashma. So they were minyanim. The minyanim weren't in shul. The minyanim is apparently were in different places, it's not clear. So the shuva from the Yad of the Yo, this goes back to the 1600s, Mishnevura quotes, says that that in this situation, you have it in front of you, Vav, number two, in this situation, what should you do? You daven with the, with the minion, Shachmas. And then, because the Torah doesn't address, and then you learn, and then you go to the big shul from Musaf, like big tirch. He says, at the end he says, if you're davening in a shul, okay, and, it's, and you have a normal kviyas to daven hashkam all the time, fine. But in this particular situation where you're, you're davening, you, your normal davening's in the shul. Now you're davening early because you want to chap this man. He says, so now wait from Musaf to daven b'roi v'am hadras melech. So the Mephorshim say, doesn't that go against the principle of the, of the Gemara? If not for the Romans, we'd blow Shafer and Shachris. If not for the Halel, Shachris. So you see, it's reason makdim and mitzvahs. So Musa, we should have an early. Why should we wait? Because Beroiva, it's reason like demon takes precedence. And then there's a third question. From the whole procession of Bikurim. I quoted the Rambam over here. Kate said Malinus of Bikurim. How do we bring Bikurim up to Yerushalayim? So the mission describes 
that we would all gather together in a town near Yerushalayim. And then we would wait there till the nice large crowd. Now the season's been rolling along. I, I, I harvested my Bikurim a while ago. I put my Bikurim aside. I'm heading to this town. Why don't I go straight to Yerushalayim? Why do I wait for this gathering, this procession? the says, We come together, and we, there's not even room to sleep. This is a large group comes. We all sleep in the streets. So, the first two questions were questions from Achrayim from common practice. But the third question is a question from the Mishnah and Bikurim, from the practice of, of Jews from the time of Beis HaMikdash. And there, the way the Rambam records the mitzvah bikurim, the roiv am hadras melech takes precedence over his reason makdim and lemitzvahs. So have a stira, have a conflict between doing the mitzvah soon, quickly, or doing the mitzvah with a large crowd. What's the preference? This question comes up many, many times in practice. Many, many, there are many chuvas in this. Comes up almost every bris mila. Should we do a bris mila early in the morning, right after Vasikan, or should we wait till there's a large crowd? There's a lot of literature in that. The uh, Rabbi Shishtermach tells a story of Rabbi Abram Farbstein, Rashiva of Hebron, first baby boy, wanted to do the mitzvah as early as possible. And he uh, was scheduling for post Vasikan. And then uh, he went to the Chazanish and he asked them, Am I doing the right thing? To be early, fewer people will come. Those who will come will be a tircha for them, but I'm going to do the bris, mila, zrizim, makdim, and mitzvahs. And the Chazanish said, No. The Chazanish would not explain himself. Many years later, it was a similar story that someone came to Shlomo Zalman, a little bit more explicit. He said, Tiye ben Adam, he says, I am mensch, don't be matriach people. Don't, uh, you want to do a hedonist resource at other people's expense. When you want to, it only affects you. But in these situations, we have this conflict. But what's more interesting to me is not the conflict. That's a separate suit. We can discuss that maybe Shabbos afternoon after Mincha. What I'm interested in right now is the principle of Beroiv Am Hadras Melech. Why does one Gemara say, Bikurim, Roiv Am Hadras Melech, determines how we bring Bikurim, have a large crowd? And why is it that when it comes to Hallel, we say, no, no, don't go for the large crowd. Don't wait till Musaf. First thing, Shachris. So I would suggest the following. And suggestions be made in different ways. This is how I would uh, frame it. There is a, a Gemara that describes that on Yom Kippur in Beis HaMikdash, when the word came back to the Kohen Gadol that the Sora Lazozel had in fact been pushed down the cliff. So there was a system of, of flags. So the Kohen Gadol would know that the Avod had taken place. And when he found out that the Avod took place, so then the Kohen Gadol would take out the Sefer Torah and he would start learning the Parsha Achrei Moshe. Gemara says that at the same time as the Koyen Gadol was reading the Torah, the Par Vesoyer, the Korbanos were being burnt. The Gemara says, Haroya Koyen Gadol Kishu Koyre and Haroya Par Vesor and Israfen. He's a Jew who decides he wants to watch the power of his sorry get burnt. He does not get to see the Kayan reading. And the person who wants to see the Kayan read the Sefer Torah doesn't get to watch the animals being burnt. And a Roya Parvis on this rough, very Roya Parvis on this rough, and a Roya Kayan God will kiss your And then the Gemara, the Mish, the, the Gemara adds on. It's not because it would, it's not, it's not allowed to see both. Simply because they're far away from each other. 
So you can't see both. You can only see one. That's the Gemara in Samach Esam and Beis. The Gemara, two dafim later, quotes this Gemara and says, what's the Gemara telling me? The Gemara is, makes a principle. You can't see both. Why? Because you can't see both, because they're too far away from each other. So what's the Gemara making the point? They're simply too far away from each other. It's a fact. Is that a halacha? So why is the Gemara going out of its way to say, you know, you got you to choose your venue. You got to make a decision. So Gemara says, because it wants to teach us a principle. I can only dance at one chasana. I have to make a decision. If I decide to see the Purim and Israfim, I can't leave the Purim and Israfim and watch and say, I'll chap the end of the Koen Gadol. If I decide to watch the Koen Gadol, I can't chap and try to go to Purim. So I have to choose. I can't try to do both. I can't dance about chasana. Gemara says, why not? Because in principle, a ma'avir in Allah mitzvahs, once I get engaged in one mitzvah, so I can't do another mitzvah. I can't leave it. I can't drop it. I can't, if I pick my tzvillin, shall, shall, uh, shall rosh, I have to put them on. I can't find tzvillin shiyat. If I, the bane of a gabai is when you take out the wrong Sefer Torah, Right? And, and it's right after Simchas Torah, and you have it rolled all the Sifri Torah, and they're all holding with Zesa Bracha, and now it's gracious. And uh, the whole Sibra watches the uh, person going for the wrong Sefer, and they all are uh, yelling in their seats, no, 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 no. And he gets the wrong Sefer. And now he picks up the Sefer that's rolled to Zesa Bracha, and Shabbos gracious. We all know the halacha, because it all happened to us. Ein ma'avirin al mitzvahs. You can't put the Sefer Torah back. You have to bring it out, and you start rolling. So the Gemara says, it's teaching us that if I, want, if I decide to watch the Koyin Godel read the Kriya Satorah on Yom Kippur, I can't now go over to watch the Purim and Israfim and vice versa. So the Gemara says, my mitzvah. What's the mitzvah? Because when you're watching, you're celebrating the Kriya Satara. You're watching, you're celebrating the Parman Rafa. So you see from this Gemara that there are different kinds of Beroiv Am Hadras Melech. There's a Roiv Am Hadras Melech when more people are involved in the mitzvah. And there's the Beroiv Am Hadras Melech when you're simply watching and celebrating, you're a bystander. There is a, a mitzvah. The, the Gemara calls it a mitzvah. There is a mitzvah. It's a schus to be a bystander and there that's entirely counterintuitive. Because the Gemara says, if I have to choose between being a person who's involved in the mitzvah or his reason makdim in the mitzvahs. So then I choose to be the reason makdim in the mitzvahs. But if I have a mitzvah of being a bystander and I have to choose between that and reason makdim then the verov am of being a bystander takes precedence. It's entirely counterintuitive. Let's go through the sources, the sources right now. Gemara says when it comes to Bikurim, when it comes to Bikurim, so you had a large crowd coming. And in order to have this large crowd that would simply watch and observe and dance us up, so we had, we, we postponed the reason like the Mitzvahs. Mitzvah. That Beroivan doesn't mean, it's not telling us that all the Jews are bringing Bikurim to get together. All the Jews are bringing the Jewish to get together so that there'll be this large entourage of people with flutes and with drums and, and they'll dance us up. It's not all people. The Beroi Vamad Vesmelech are the, the entourage, are the people that are celebrated. When it comes to Hallel, so then we're all saying Hallel. So if we're all saying Hallel, then you have to make a decision. What's the
more important that we should all participate in saying halal or that we should say halal early. So Gemara says saying halal early is more important. Right? When it comes, it's entirely counterintuitive. When it comes to the when it comes to the the Kiddush Levana, that could be for several reasons why Beroiv Am and Kiddush Levana takes precedence over saying Kiddush Levana earlier. Because the Kiddush Levana is a mitzvah that's done besimch with lots of people, it's supposed to dance the Kiddush Levana. So it actually makes the actual Kiddush Levana more significant. It could be that the davening of the Musaf, Beroiv Am, that's takes precedence over his resource because if we have a, a large minion, so our musaf will be a, a, a nicer musaf. But what the Gemara says when it comes to Bikurim, there the Gemara says that being part of the entourage, that's a separate mitzvah. Watching the coin Godol is a separate mitzvah. So a separate mitzvah of Beroiv Amad Melech simply there to celebrate. But it's a separate mitzvah. So then it takes precedence over his reason like the mitzvahs. But when Beroi Vamad Melech is participating in the mitzvah, then I have a choice. I can give COVID to the mitzvah by participating or by having it early. So having it early is better. So you see that there are different ways in which halacha looks at the coming together of the tzibur. They think that gives us insight into to the idea of Biroi Bam Hadris Melech, to what's the significance of having a large crowd. Intuitively, we say a large crowd, all right, more COVID makes greater impact. The, uh, but you see, there are two ways in which the zebra comes together and is Biroi Bam Hadris Melech. One way is that. One way is that we are we're, we're celebrating. We are we are marking the we are marking the importance of bikurim. We're 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 giving greater life and greater concern. One of the lines, one of the, the probably the the most uh, poignant song that has come out of the uh, COVID is Yishai Ribo's Keter uh, Melucha. And there he has, when he discusses the, the Pirun, the separateness that we have, one of his powerful lines is, Rotsim Lichyot Otach Velotielavad. We want to give life. By being together, we charge. We give life, we give significance, we give celebration. That's the that's the Virom Hadras Melech of the Bikurim. That's the Biroi Vam Hadras Melech of the large group of Ara the Talmidim, where you where you build somebody, where you make somebody strong. That's the Rav Zilverstein, when he discusses this idea, he tells that he was once in a uh, in a, a nursing home, and a Jew got up to speak. And it was a Jew that had suffered terribly in his life. A Jew that uh, had lost, as many of the Jews at that time, who lost everything in the Shoah. And he was a person who lived uh, with great uh, expected bitterness in him and uh, frustration. And when he would get up to, he was there, Rav Zilberstein was a young man, and he was there when this person got up to speak and he learned the Gemara. A person who is, uh, learns Torah, he does good things for other people, and he davens as a group. Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Mala love He says, it's as if he's given me chiyas, as if he's, he's redeemed me. When this Jew learned that Gemara, he became alive. As long as he was, couldn't provide for, for anybody else. When he saw that a Baruch himself felt as if he needs others, he needs a tzibur. And this person can be part of that tzibur. 
says he never hadn't seen this person come alive till he learned this Gemara. That's the the chiyus. That's when a person is. That's the separate mitzvah of Rebbe Hamdras Melech. That's watching the the bikurim. That's the uh, the mitzvah of watching the koyin gadol, because then you give life to another person. You give life to a mitzvah. You have a large crowd there. So the reading of the of the uh, of the Kriyas Torah becomes so much more meaningful to so many more people. That's a separate mitzvah. And that even trumps the reason why even the mitzvahs. There's another Beroivam. That's the Beroivam of every tzibur. That's the Beroivam of having not just 10, 20, 30 people, having a few hundred people. That's the Beroivam of the halo. That's the Beroivam of of Dabling Musaf. What's the that Beroivam? That's Rav Zulbishan writes how every Jew comes with his own Zuchuyus. He comes into Shul, come into a Shachras. Every Jew comes with their own whatever they've been doing before. One Jew comes, he's been up since uh, four o'clock in the morning learning. And one Jew comes because he was up all night in the, in the emergency room. And one Jew comes with his, uh, with his uh, clothes that he needs in order to, to, uh, to do his work, to, comes with his uh, clothes to, to go into the, the ER. Everybody comes with their own zuchuis, where they've been, where they're coming from. So when you have a large crowd and every Jew comes into the room with a different schus, learning, he was taking care of somebody, he, watching, out, watching over his children, taking care of his family, whatever it was. So that is enhances the mitzvah. There are different ways to enhance the mitzvah. Either to have all of those chuyus or zvizim makdim in the mitzvahs. So then the halacha is that this reason makdim in the mitzvahs takes precedence over that b'roiv ha'mad v'smelech. But then there is a, another b'roiv ha'mad v'smelech. And that's the Gemara in Brochis, in the Daphne and Gimel. And that's another b'roiv that we often have. Then the Gemara says that when it comes to birchas and mitzvahs, if a group is doing a mitzvah together, then one person should say the bracha for everybody else. We, we practice that Friday night. Friday night we say Kiddush. The preference is that one person says Kiddush for everybody. The preference is even when it comes to a birchas hanen and we don't have that rule, we don't say that if five guys are eating an apple, then one person should be right to everybody. We say one person we say they should all make their own brachas. But when it's a birchas on mitzvah, or when it's a, a birchas on then in which is performing the mitzvah of Kiddush, so then it's better to, for one person to say, What kind of roivam is that? It's not the roivam of each one doing a separate mitzvah. And it's not the roivam of observing and watching. So apparently this is the third roivam. And that is where one person takes a step back and allows somebody else to do the mitzvah. If you five guys could say a bracha, and five say, well, let one person make the, the kiddush. One person will make the hamoitzi. That's the beroiv am of a person being mavatev, a person letting go. It's something that comes to mind very often. An idea from Yisrael Salanter. Hear it very often that uh, two people are uh, avelim, and they they w- both want to say kaddish. They both want to have the the omud. So they can duke it out. They can fight it out. But one person, we saw Salanta would say, can walk away with his chus of being mevater, of letting somebody else having giving it to somebody else. That's the third v'roiv am hadras that's the Vam that we practice every Friday night when one person makes the, the bracha. 
And that Biraivam, I think, is the is the most important Biraivam. That's the Biraivam felt that we're that we have to make sure that we feel that we're missing and that we don't get used to until Kaddish Baruch Hu brings us back to Reuven Hanvis Melech. Right now, so we're all in different minyanim. Some minyanim are 20 strong, 40 strong, 100 strong, and it's a great bracha. Our, our neighborhood is a great, great bracha. They were able to have the, the davening Kitikuna, the davening is done in a way that it's done every other year. And we can have almost the full davening and have the uh, full Bali Tvila. That's a azchus that many, many other neighbors would love to have. What are we missing? What have, we have to make sure that we don't get used to? It's another beautiful song in the beautiful line in Yisha Ribo's song. How we make sure that even as we have to maintain separateness, social distance, we have to distance ourselves and our expressions to each other, to mask ourselves. How are we supposed to still maintain a sense of community, collegiality, being one group? How are we supposed to maintain so that we can get together and, uh, and celebrate each other? That's one way of reminding ourselves of what that we can share in taking care of the tzibu, the community, Baruch Hashem, that very much is present, whether it's being involved financially in the community, whether it's making sure that uh, the many people that stepped forward to make sure that every single location was well taken care of. That's the Beroiv Am Hadras Melech. But there's another Beroiv Am Hadras Melech that we have to make sure it's something that we look forward to having. That we look forward, that we don't get used to the idea of having four feet around us. We don't get used to the idea of being distanced from each other. That there is a, a value and a zchus to the Biraivam by being uncomfortable because I can make space for another Jew. And that is the Biraivam that we have to make sure always stays with us until the Kaddish Baruch Hu sees we understand the principle so well that he brings us back. But I think of this Biroiv Amad Melech, I think of two Gemaras. One Gemara was of Yehuda Bar Eloi. Yehuda Bar Eloi was the Talmud of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, he suffered because his Talmudim didn't make room for each other. And Rabbi Akiva left at Tzava. Rabbi Akiva was survived by five Talmudim. We know he lost. 24,000 Talmidim. He was survived by five and he left at Tzavo. That his Talmidim should learn from the, the loss that he suffered. And when the Midrashim described the Talmidim who learned this, they described him as a Yehuda Bar Eloi. Gemara says, the Yehuda Bar Eloi, Gemara in Sanhedrin. The Gemara lists the great generations that Claudius Yisrael had. The generation of Boaz, the generation of Paldi ben Loyish, and then the Gemara says the generation of Yeshua was a great generation. Derishol Moshe, and the climax of the Gemara is Derishol Yudibar Yibamiloi Yiras Hashem Itis Halo. Where do you find this awareness of the Rambam from Yudibar Loyish's generation? That there was only one jacket, it was cold. And there's only one jacket. There was only one smicha, it was only one uh, blanket. So six Talmidim would have to get the exact opposite of social distancing. They had to have social ingathering. They had to have six people under one jacket to and they were learning to 
So Chaim Shul says that most people learn this Gemara and they say such poverty that only six people could afford a blanket. And even with such poverty, they were able to learn Kedush Baruch Hu's Torah. So the Chaim Shul says that's not what the Gemara is saying. The Gemara is saying that the only way that one blanket works for six people is if no one tugs in their own direction. If each person tugs the, the blanket to cover themselves, nobody learns and nobody falls asleep. You have a, a 24 hour pillow fight. The only way that six can manage in one blanket is if each one says, let the other guy have it. I'm not pulling in my direction. Whatever it covers, it covers. Shem Chaim Shem Levit says, Yira Hashem mitis halal is not poverty. It's Biroiv Am Hadras Melech. It's the Kedush Baruch Hu being celebrated. Kedush Baruch Hu saying, look at my children. Look at their values. Look at how they want to provide for each other. I often learn the Gemara. Gemara says that when we come to the Beis HaMikdosh, we're going to stand shoulder to shoulder. It's going to be tight. It's going to be a tight fit. When we bring the Korban Pesach, it's going to be a very tight fit in the Azara. When we come on Yom Kippur to be in the Beis HaMikdosh and we hear the, the Koyan doing the Avoida and everybody bows down, it's going to be very, very hard to fit in. We're going to be chalishing how we, we're going to be, all of the statistics are not going to work. And there'll be those who will be saying, it's not going to work, stay out, stay home. And those who learn the Gemara will say, well, we'll make it in. We often point out Rav Cook's insight that every Jew went to Beis Amikdash, experienced a a new dimension that wasn't there. We all thought the world as six dimensions. And every Jew would come home after Korban Pesach and say, I can't explain it. It doesn't make any sense at all. Chayisi, I lived it. The cook says that's how every Jew gets introduced to sanctity, to Kiddush Baruch It's a different dimension this world. We often ask the question, why we I made Sufim? Kiddush Baruch Hu knows how to, he knows how to design a place and it, we're able to find space for, uh, for an endless number of people. So why I made Sufim? So he used to think, because you have to want to be there. Baruch was willing to do a nace and willing to show him himself. When does the Kaddish Baruch Hu welcome into his dimension? When does the Kaddish Baruch Hu want to give you the certainty of his existence and do it for you personally? If you're willing to sit shoulder to shoulder in a place with not even and, and make yourself small, there's room for another Jew. When a Jew is willing to make himself small for another Jew, because Baruch Hu says, then when you bow down, I will show you an unbelievable nice. That's the third kind of Beroiv Am Hadras Melech. Yom Kippur, the Raman writes, it's kapora la yochid velat zibur. That the Kedush Baruch Hu will forgive us as yechidim, that we understand very well. The yochid, we all have shortcomings, we all have flaws, we all haven't lived up to the, the goals that we set for ourselves. And that's what we're working on. Baruch Hu should give us the guidance to be able to do a tshuva. Should be able to do it in a way because Baruch Hu accepts it. What 
do Chazal mean when Chazal say, Yoim Kapora la Yochid vila Tzibur? The Tzibur doesn't do Averis. Tzibur is a corporate body. Individuals can make mistakes. Individuals can have flaws. Individuals can create a Tzibur which has uh, sorely lacking in some of its uh, achievements and goals. But what's the significance of Kapora la Tzibur? As the Rav pointed out, it doesn't say that the Tzibur needs Kapora because the Tzibur did, is doing tshuva. It says that individuals can have a Kapora through their own acts of tshuva, or individuals can have kapara by becoming part of a tzibur. Yom Kippur allows Jews two different ways of coming back to the Rebbe two different ways of receiving the Torah of the kapara of Yom Kippur. One way is individuals. We can involve more people. We as individuals, we come to the Sibur, each one bring their own schus. That's one way in which individuals get kapar. But Yom Kippur, Kaddish Baruch Hu allows Jews another road to achieve kapar. It's a kapar with, it's not that the Sibur has to do tshuva. It's not that the community has to the community, as it, as it is, one of the, one of the, Dorshe Ramuzi says that a tzibur is tzadi, tzadikim, beis ben and beis v'shoim. The tzibur, as it is, with all of its uh, flaws. But the tzibur, when Klal Yisrael looks at a tzibur and attaches itself to the tzibur, and Klal Yisrael makes we're willing to make room for everybody else in the tzibur. We're willing to be I made sufim. We're willing to look at other people and accept who they are and what they think. When Claudius Yisrael attaches itself, as the Rav pointed out, the different ways that a person can achieve kapari. Every Jew has to do tshuva. Every Jew has to introspect and have a personal presentation of Rabbi Shlom. But a Kaddish Baruch Hu offers every Jew different roads back. One is the very, very tough road of personal tshuva, of personal introspection, of a Kabbalah Yosa Lovei. There's another road back, so to speak. And that's by being part of a Kaddish Baruch Hu's tzibur, being part of Beroiv Am, Hadras Melech. What's the Hadras Melech? It means the Hadras Melech when Kaddish Baruch Hu sees that his children are working together to do his mitzvahs. Kaddish Baruch Hu sees that there are five people taking a Sefer Torah in order to, to involve more people. And there is certainly a, a Hadras Melech when a Kaddish Baruch Hu sees that a mitzvah is done with lots of people being involved and cheering it on and people wanting to give chiyas and celebrate other Jews. There's a hundred smelech when a Kaddish Baruch Hu sees his children and each one is mevater. Each one lets the other one pull the blanket. Each one finds space for another Jew. Kaddish Baruch Hu sees his children, each one finding space for the other. Then apparently a Kaddish Baruch Hu says, I can also find space for every single Jew. That's the Beroi Vam Hadras Melech of Yom Kippur of Kapara. Marami Lublin, the Lublin Rav, was a great darshan. At the very end of Mesechtis, uh, the second parak, is the halacha that we review every Friday night. Every Friday night, 
The Mishnah says at the end of the second paragraph of Avalikin, Erev Shabbos Im Chasheich, it's getting dark, but it's not yet sunset. So a person looks around in his house and he says, he saw them, have we given the trumas and mice we need to give so we can eat our food? And he robs them, have we made an Erev so that we can carry in this area? Hadlik was an air. Now if we've done that, it's time to light the air. There is Shabbos. So the Lublina Rav with Darshan, I'll, I'll paraphrase. Erev Shabbos and Chashecha, there are times when things look dark and unstable and we don't have clarity. We can't see exactly where the path is taking us and where our trajectory is. And we don't know First wave, second wave. We don't know quarantine, not quarantine. We don't know mayoyim or mayim, as we're all learning. We don't know what they, what each day brings. So Lina Rav says that Jew can address those situations. And I'll paraphrase. A Jew can say, and Rav them, have you provided a comfortable place for all Jews that you can get together, that you can be in the same place, you can celebrate your Shabbos together. You can listen to the person's Kriya Satayr. Isartem, have you given to the Tzibur? Have you given your Trumas and Maisras? Have you contributed? Have you helped out? Have you taken part whether it's a saw safer Torah, whether it's being part of a minion for Kiddush Lavana. And if so, then there's a third. Hadlika was in there. Then it's time to bring more sanctity to this world. Time to bring more Kedusha. A Jew brings more Kedusha to the world when he makes himself smaller. A Jew brings more Kedusha when he's oimed tzufim. When he finds space for everybody around him. Because that's when the Kedush Baruch Hu says that if you now bow down, you'll be Mishtach Baruch One of our many challenges during these days, and there are many, obviously, to stay healthy and to do what we have to do to keep the standards as best as we can do so that our tzibur, our community will be enjoy good health and Yichus Yom. And we have the many challenges of keeping the tzibur going, so to speak. We don't have all the regular protocols and all the regular patterns that we look forward to coming back to them. And we have challenges to continuously remind ourselves of the hergeshim of the feelings, the emotions that we had just a few months ago when we were entirely awed by our vulnerability. And now that we understand more, we sometimes forget our vulnerability. Now we understand more about the uh, trajectories and droplets and uh, social distancing and masks as very often we can forget what we what we learned so keenly such a short period of time ago and that's the our vulnerability in the Kiddush Baruch Hu's ability to show his control at any time but one of the great challenges we have is not to become comfortable with our smaller minyanim, not to become comfortable with smaller venues, not to be comfortable, to become comfortable when we're missing Beroiv Am Hadras Melech. To celebrate our resilience, absolutely. To be grateful to the Rabboni Shalom, that we can get together in minyanim, and Kish Baruch Hu has given us a, a fantastic summer weather, 
a nice nisr in itself, that maybe one or two minyanim were missed, it's unbelievable. To be grateful that we have, Leonora, so many bali tefila, that we can put together minyanim in different places, absolutely. It's a gift that so many other communities would love to have. But we can't become comfortable that we're missing Beroiv Am Hadras Melech. We can't become comfortable that we walk into Shul and we don't have, and we have the Zechuyas of 20, 30, 40, 100 people. We want the Zechuyas of hundreds of people. We want the Zechuyas when you come into a, a Shul, thousands of people, the different, varying minyanim, and all over the place. Not to become comfortable that we don't get to exercise the quality of being mevater, of being uncomfortable, in order to be able to have a juice it very close to me. Bez Hashem, as we consider these ideas, Beroiv Am Hadras Melech, and the course of Yom Kippur, when we are Zoycha to the Kapora, not only the Kapora of the Yochid, but the Kapora of the Tzibas, the Rav says, because we attach ourselves to our Kehillah community. And we pine for the time when it will come back and see the Hadras Melech, not the Pachad of the king, but the Hadras Melech. The Hadras Melech of the Baruch Hu taking great pride in Jews always finding space for another Jew, always being open, always being accepting, always being welcoming. So then, by taking all of these ideas to heart, we will talk and be zoicha to the kapar of the yochit, the kapar of the tzibur. Because Baruch Hu will look at his children and say, once again, it's time to bring back Roy Vam Hadras Melech. It's time to celebrate me in great numbers together. Bez Hashem, that will be, bring us so much closer to have the Hadras Melech of a Kaddish Baruch Hu being able to celebrate the real Hadras Melech that we're waiting for. Shana to Vagma, Hatima to Vagu Chabes. Thank you very much. Yes, you hope you feel better, right, Thank you, thank you. So we're full of slam. We're full of slam. Feel good. Mark, thank you very much. Say it again, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay.